Hi guys, I need a slow turning motor or a low geared motor for one of my projects and one of the quickest and easiest ways of getting one of them is to use a radio controlled servo but take the circuit board out of it. So you get these for about I don't know, just over a pound if you buy them in reasonable bulk, sort of 10 for 11 pounds or something like that. So what we need to do is take it apart, there's four screws in the bottom, there's a circuit board in there that we don't need which converts the normal data signal to how far round it needs to turn. Normally a servo only turns part of a turn, there's a little stop in it that we need to take out so that it'll do a continuous 360 degree rotation and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save the circuit board because that's handy for other little projects where you want a small ESC electronic speed control for small electric motors. So it's, don't throw it away, it's worth keeping. The only thing I'm not sure about is if I've got a small enough screwdriver here today because a lot of my stuff's downstairs. I think that one will do it. They're actually crosshead screws and this is just an ordinary flathead screwdriver but it's small enough to go in there and do the job. Depending on how powerful you need your motor to be, you might need to buy a bigger servo than this. This is 9 grams and it's fairly lightweight. Right, the gears will fall out, so try and remember which way round they go. This one <laughs> is the one that's got a little. Um, bit sticking out. Does the camera pick that up? Which you want to cut off because that stops it going all the way around. There's also a bit of electronics in here that the servo uses to measure how far round it's turned. A potentiometer, which we don't need, but because it's actually joined to that shaft, we're going to leave it in place. That's the electric motor with a very small little gear on it. We need to get the bottom off here and the label holds it in place. Actually, before I do that, I'll just cut that notch off and put this side back together. If I can find a knife. Oh, there's a knife. Okay, that's out of the way. Can we remember which way round it went? Were you watching? <laughs> Right, let's work this out. That piece is going to be up in there, so that's easy enough. Then there needs to be a gear that's turning that one. And there needs to be one going to be over there, which is it that way up or that way up? We'll work this out in a minute. Might have to go and 
check what I've done in a minute. Right, that one won't fit on there, so that's not the right one. That one will. So that one. got to be on there. That one's got to be. On there, because with a pointy stick, let's come up a bit closer. Gear on the motor is going to drive that one. That one's going to drive that one. And then that one is going to drive that one. And then that one is driving that one. that one's got a key on it, so it's got to be the right way round for it to line up. Pop that out and do it this way. Right, let's see if we can get the bottom off. Well, that's easy enough. Is the circuit board going to come out easily? Nope. I could just cut the wires off, but I do actually want to get that circuit board out because I want to use it for other things. Ah, I know why it's not coming out easily. It's actually soldered here onto that potentiometer. So we might have to try and desolder it so we can slip it off the potentiometer. That's going to be fun. I'm going to have to heat up at least two contacts at the same time. Soldering iron time. Get a lump of that to hold it all still. Could have done with putting this on zoom, couldn't we? So you could see it a bit clearer. Sorry about that. Plug my soldering iron in. We'll have to wait for that to warm up now. I've zoomed in a bit, but you probably still won't be able to see much because my hands will be in the way while I'm doing it. I need to desolder there and there at the same time. I might be able to lever it up pulling the wires. bit, we're nearly there. There we 
we go. So that's the circuit circuit board that converts the data signal to how far round the motor needs to turn and it uses that potentiometer that's in the bottom of there that I've just unsoldered the three legs from that's how it knows how far round the servo has turned so that's now unneeded and serves no purpose. But the shaft on it is used by the gears, so we couldn't just pull it out and do away with it. What we can do now, desolder these two wires and either solder our own wires on it or we could just use these wires direct. You might get confused though and try and use it as a proper um, servo. So what I think I'll do is I'll desolder these and wire on one of those sort of plugs. Well actually the opposite to that. The, oh, there we are, there's one laying there. One of them. So I'll solder one of them directly on. to use them on something else and they're a bit, a bit mucky. I have no idea which way round I want it to turn. So. Just trust to luck for now. So if we're lucky, a little slot at the back there. Might be able to squeeze those wires in there. Yeah, I think they'll do. Mm, the only problem is <laughs> I've left those a bit too solder lumps there a bit too big to sit down properly. Try and reduce it a bit. Right, so what we should have now is a low geared electric motor. I'll just go and find a battery that I can plug into it. I've right, got three AAA batteries here that are wired up so I can plug them into a um, one of these JST connectors. 
Right, that's going. You probably can't see it though, can you? Uh, wouldn't go any more than three AAA batteries or AA, what's that, four and a half volts or thereabouts. I think these will probably take five volts happily, but don't try sticking nine volts or twelve volts through them. But there you go, a quick and dirty instant conversion to a low geared, slow geared electric motor. Slight change of plan. I've just put this pulley on here. Just put a screw straight through it into the servo. But because of the way I've got positive and negative connected with these wires, it actually turns in the direction that undoes the screw so it will work its way loose when I'm using it. So I'm just going to take this apart again. I'm not going to film it, but I'm going to take it apart again and swap the positive and negative over so it turns in the opposite direction and tends to tighten that screw up rather than loosen it.